This session is about gravitational redshift. Now, we've got to recognize already that general relativity lets us know that either high acceleration or a strong gravitational field causes uh, clocks to run more slowly. Now, this is all, a, I guess, uh, depends on your location, your speed, or your acceleration. So let's take it to the extreme. So let's first of all think about the Doppler effect. We know that the pitch of an approaching car is higher than that of the car moving away. This is because of the Doppler effect. Uh, we know that the light of an approaching source is shifted to the blue and the light of a receding source is shifted to the red. So again, this is something which we've observed and this is the Doppler effect for light. Uh, and we normally recognize this by looking at uh, reference lines from specific uh, electron shell transitions compared to the absorption lines from a star. So we can see blue shift and we can see red shift uh, using this comparison of absorption lines and emission spectrum. Now with that in mind, Let's think about what happens when a uh, clock, first of all, compared to the ground floor, compared to the upper floor. Now, uh, on the ground floor, it's deeper in the Earth's gravitational field, so the ticks are more slow. So that means that time would run slower at the ground floor as it would in the penthouse. At the same time, if we have a light source, uh, which is emitting light uh, from the bottom of the tower, then what happens as the light climbs in the gravitational field, its frequency decreases and its wavelength increases. Because, uh, as I said, its frequency decreases uh, because um, it takes uh, less and less uh, time. So these statements are all true. And this all seems to make fair enough, but can we test it? Now, Pound and Rebecca, uh, oh, sorry, Pound and Rebka created an experiment which actually tested this in a very, very similar situation. They found a tower at the University of Harvard. And what they did, they had gamma rays of 14.4 kilo electron volts emitted from a nuclear transition of iron 57. As it turns out, they went from the top emitting to the bottom, so they actually detected blue shifting. And it was detected at a base 22.6 meters uh, from the top of the tower. Now, if we look at the energy here, we've got to think about this. The energy emitted from the top of the power, uh, tower is going to be the Planck constant times the frequency of the light emitted plus mgh, which is the potential energy. And the energy detected at the base is going to be Planck's constant uh, multiplied the uh, frequency observed. So I get some terms correct there. What we can do is we can put this into a formula. So we can derive a formula from this. Uh, conservation of energy tells us that these two values should be equal. The energy at the top and the energy at the bottom. Now, since the mass of the photon equals hf over c squared, Therefore, we can replace the m uh, with that value. And from here, we can rearrange for uh, the frequency observed. And so the frequency observed equals the frequency emitted multiplied by 1 plus gravity on planet Earth, uh, or gravitational field strength, uh, multiplied by the height of the tower divided by c squared. And as it turns out, uh, the change in frequency, uh, and it doesn't really matter which way it's going to be, is going to be uh, the frequency observed minus the frequency emitted. So therefore, I end up finding out that the change in frequency divided by frequency equals g h over c squared. Um, the frequency in this uh, formula doesn't really make any difference if it's going to be uh, if it's going up or down. 
uh, because the change is generally so slight and therefore we can normally uh, not worry too much about the uh, if we're using the frequency observed or the frequency emitted. Uh, here's a question here. So if a photon of NG14 0.4 kilo electron volts, as used in the example, from the top of the tower, but now 30 meters tall towards the ground, what will be the shift in frequency at the base? So we recognize that energy equals HF. So therefore I can work out the frequency of the light. And once I know the frequency of the light, I can place it into the formula. So therefore the blue shift is 1.16 times 10 to the 4 hertz. And there's an example of gravitational redshift.